So this is our blood pressure sensor. So wherever you can feel a pulse, we can monitor so we get beat to beat blood pressure. So you've turned all of this into this. It really looks like a contact lens. Hypertension affects a third of all adults in the United States, resulting in the deaths of more than 1,100 people per day. While cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death globally, accounting for the deaths of one in four people. I'm Iris Tian Shan in California, where I'm meeting scientists who have created soft, wearable blood pressure sensors that allow for continuous beat-to-beat -beat monitoring of blood pressure. They hope this will allow for earlier, more informed diagnoses and faster responses to acute conditions. Hello. Hi, Edith. Hi, Michelle. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Welcome Thank you to so our much. Lab. Well, thanks for having us. Michelle Kine is a biomedical engineering professor at the University of California, Irvine, who heads Kine Labs. So, my personal goal is to end symptomatic based medicine. So, usually, medicine is performed in a reactionary basis. Somebody feels sick and then they go to see a doctor, but that is not the most efficient way to do things. We know that physiological signals precede clinical deterioration. So everything that we do, we try to develop medical grade devices to give you important physiological monitoring, the way you would get monitored at a hospital, but in a way that you can do this anywhere. So in your home, on the go, while you're exercising. So basically the technology itself is already out there. What you're doing is turning into low cost and... Uh... So beat to beat blood pressure sensors, blood pressure monitors is available. Uh, there's a few companies that make them. They're available for like in the hospital in like the critical care unit. The normal way to get beat to beat blood pressure variability information or continuous blood pressure information is to actually insert a catheter into your arterial line. So we're doing it non-invasively. So that's really the key. The fun aspect of our sensors is that everything is made using a children's toy. So we can pattern very inexpensively because we use um, Shrinky Dinks, which was a really popular children's toy when I was a kid. And so we pattern different materials onto the Shrinky Dinks. And if you remember back to those, uh, those fun children's toys, you just pop them in an oven for three minutes and they come out. And instead of using them to make little jewelries or, or Christmas decorations, we actually take the active layer off. So we take the thin layer of metal or nanomaterials off and we put them into a soft stretchy material to allow us to get very high resolution monitoring. How did you come up with this concept? Well, cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death. And we wanted a better way to me measure blood pressure than this, right? Because this is what you do when you go to the doctor's office once or mm -hmm. twice a year. But your blood pressure changes with every beat. And the changes, the fluctuations in beat to beat blood pressure, as well as the circadian rhythms of your blood pressure, is a prognostic indicator of cardiovascular morbidity, as well as other diseases. So early intervention. Exactly. So what's the alternative you're bringing on the table now? So instead of getting a single systolic and a single diastolic measurement that this is capable of doing, we have a little Band-Aid like sensor. So this is our blood pressure sensor. So wherever you can feel a pulse, every time your heart beats, we can monitor so we get beat to beat blood pressure. So you've turned all of this into this. It really looks like a contact lens. <laughs> Can we give it a try? Sure. All yeah, right, let's, let's go. It. So here is a pressure sensor that we're using. It's essentially just a little pressure sensor. If you press it, then you'll see a signal mm -hmm. come up. And so what I'm going to do is put this on your left arm okay. to measure your radio artery. And so okay. first, I'm going to actually put this on, strap Same. you into this little splint that we use. There we go. So this gives it some stability, right? Stability and also helps expose your radio artery. And then what I'm going to do is feel for your pulse. Yes, right there. You're alive. So <laughs> just put the sensor right on top of there. And then there you go. You can measure your um, yeah. pulse right there. See? OK, so here we're monitoring my heart rate and blood pressure, correct? Yes, exactly. So Joshua, right now we're you know sitting with all these wires and the monitor, but in real life, how would this be used? So we take this pressure sensor that we have developed and incorporate that into a patch. 
such that a user can just put that on their wrist where they can measure their B2B blood pressure in an everyday setting. The real technology here is the, it's that it's small and that it can conform to the body. I mean, can you explain how is this different than the technology and the other products that are already available out there? So traditional uh, electronics, they use very hard, rigid materials and your body is a very soft material. And so these electronics, they can't really interface with the body very well because they're mechanically incompatible. And so what we have developed here is a soft sensor that has me uh, similar mechanical properties like your body. It's just a soft material and it can interface with the body a lot better and then it can measure the physiological signals coming off of your body more accurately and precisely. So we're gonna cut out this little design right here and that's what's gonna dictate this final shape of the electrode. So what we just did is now we cut out the template with the laser cutter. And so what we're gonna do now is deposit gold on top of the, the pattern that we just cut out. Before the shrinking process, we need to put our functional material on top. So it's ah. any type of conductive material right. or any stiff layer. So this is that deposition process specifically for metal. So the actual metal is this material here. So this is probably 99.999999% pure gold. And so this is the gold that we're depositing on there. What we do is we have the matte area. This is a shadow mass that mm -hmm. we apply on there in the shape of the sensor or whatever device we're trying to build. We put this entire thing inside the chamber and the gold gets deposited over this entire surface. And it's just like this for the next 10 minutes. By this time, we already have our golden sensor, but it needs to be much smaller. This is accomplished by heating the gold strip for around 20 minutes. At high temperatures, it will shrink by a factor of 30. Although indiscernible to the naked eye, the shrinking means that the gold is now a convoluted structure that can flex almost like a spring. The sensor is then placed in soft, flexible materials. It's this ability to flex that allows for the measurement of the pressure exerted by the radial artery on the wrist. The movement of the gold causes a small change in its electrical charge that indicates how much movement has occurred. Once it's been placed into the soft material, it's time to test the sensor's durability. But blood pressure is not the only use for the shrinking technology. Julia Zakashensky is a doctoral student. She's currently building a glucose sensor. But the molecule she's really chasing is cortisol, an essential hormone that can also be an indicator of stress levels. We have achieved the lowest limit of detection for glucose, which is just a proof of concept for similar molecules and biomarkers, such as cortisol, um, on a stretchable substrate than anyone that we've seen currently reported. So what we've achieved is something that can be worn like a Band-Aid and can also give the readout of the lowest uh, concentrations of glucose that are physiologically relevant. So we want to induce mechanical cracking in the mm -hmm. gold film because that increases surface area. Okay. So if you imagine the Grand Canyon or any canyon, if it cracks, now there's two huge walls Right, mm. And that's additional surface area that can react. We use this motor to basically stretch the electrode as we're measuring the electrochemical signal <laughs> inside. And what that allows us to do is uh, to track the improvement to the signal as we stretch it. So what we end up using is the data from when it's completely stretched out and after it's returned back to its original position. And mm. we measure before and after, we see the improvement, and then we use that same electrode to measure glucose. Yeah. Just visually, if you look into this light, mm -hmm. I guess, I don't know if you can see, but can you see there's white spots? Or like, the, you can see the cracks. So it used to be pretty solid gold. Mm -hmm. You can't really see through it, it's opaque. When we stretch it, you can really see a lighter kind of color coming through because you're physically causing the gold to separate. And what's the purpose of this? The first time you do that to the electrode, you really break the gold, like a lot. You create a lot of fracturing in the film. 
and that exposes new surface area, which is good for us mm -hmm. to pick up more signal. But you also stabilize the thin film, and that results in less noise in the signal. This is what we originally start with, which is about 10 square centimeters. When we shrink it, it gets much smaller, obviously. And by the time we transfer it to the stretchy part, we have shrunk it by more than 95% of its original size. So that's how we get our results. So that it's usable for some wearable yes, device. Yes, exactly. Yeah. If all goes right with yeah. all the work that you're doing here, the data you find, mm -hmm. the things you're finding, what's the ultimate goal? We'll be able to monitor in real time stress levels of any person on a daily basis, whenever they want, they'll be able to receive information on their smartphone from a tiny <laughs> band-aid-like device that they'll be wearing about how stressed they are. I really hope that this can help revolutionize the healthcare system. And I think it'll also democratize it, right? Because I don't think only the wealthy should be able to have access to healthcare. Being able to remotely monitor patients using um, artificial intelligence to be able to comb through the data so we know we can monitor patients more affordably, so we can really scale our technology, so we can start addressing you know, the world's population. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.